This morning, though, I want to take my uh, reference from Genesis chapter 2. Hallelujah. I'll be reading four verses. Um, when you're there, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended His work, which He had made, and He rested on the seventh day from all His work, which He had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, for that in it He rested from all His work, which God created and made. Now skip on down to verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Hallelujah. This morning, I'm going to talk to you about what it means to be human. Hallelujah. Let's just worship God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blessings, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your grace. We just worship you this morning. We just want to ask that your presence fill this place, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to bless the words that they have. Let them come directly from you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Jesus. We worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Before you're seated, shake the hand of your neighbor. If you don't have a neighbor, find one. We should all have neighbors. Hallelujah. Life. The essence in which we cling. At the same time that we cling to life, we are also destroyers of life. As humanity has grown, we have distanced ourselves from our origin, our true call, and the God who gave us this world and all that is in it to care for. Hallelujah. On that first day of creation, God brought into existence the very building blocks in which He created man. Hallelujah. We all know the first few words of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. As it is in many other creation stories, it started explaining how God stepped through eternity to create the heavens and everything in it. First, we know He separated the light from the darkness and called them good. He proceeded to create land and separated it from the water. By the third day, God had created earth and the basic foundations of life on it. After dry land and waters were separated, God called forth the fauna from the earth. Thus was the end of the third day. On the fourth day, God separated the lights in the heaven, distinguishing the stars in the heavens and the ever-present reflective moon that brings light even in the darkness of night. By the fifth day, God had switched His gaze from building blocks that would establish life to creating to that which would sustain life. He called forth all manner of sea creatures and the fowl of the air. You will see that without God having laid these foundations in the first four days, these animals would not have any chance for survival. He had created creatures to rule the water and the air. He called forth the creatures of the land. These creatures of land were numerous, from those that crawled on their bellies to the cattle of the field and other large land-dwelling creatures. Thus, by the end of day six, God had also brought forth another creature. This creature was the greatest among all creatures. It would have dominion over all things in the air, the sea, and on land. It was at this time God created mankind. Hallelujah. God gave us dominion over all things, over all the other creations. God had purposed man with the great task of finding, naming, and caring for all the other creations. Whether plant or animal, he was charged with caring for it. It is interesting to note that in our original command, it was that of a command to serve and protect. Now, I don't 
mean to just sit, stand up here and retell the creation story this morning. Because we all know that. Interesting enough, uh, I found out last night that Sister Crystal uh, is uh, starting this month's Sunday school with Brother Andrew. And this month's uh, theme is called Camp Creation. So, you know, starting from a young age, four, five, six, we start learning that God created the heavens and the earth. God separated the light from the darkness. Then He called it good. Then He created animals. So, I'm not going to go there today. We all know that. What I... Now, stay with me. I'm going to try not to be too scientific. I have a ten tendency to be that way. But I am going somewhere this morning. In the first four days, what I want to bring up is that God created the foundations of life. He did not bring forth life in the first four days. But He created the foundations of life. He brought forth light and dark. Things that we need. Because without the light, you know, we have problems living. We can't see things, you know. We don't have those that special sonar that God put in bats that, you know, that allows us to see in dark. But at the same time, without land, we have nothing to stand on. And of course, without water, we have nothing to drink. Without air, we have nothing to breathe. He brought those together in the first four days. It's at this time I want to break down each separate part of those foundations into their simplest forms. And I want to say that in the first four days of creation, God created earth, wind, fire, and water. That's what He created. That's, that's, a, that's a simple form. And it's interesting to notice that in most spiritual forms, the elements are the base for everything sacred. And it's at this time that I want to take those elements and show them, show how they relate to our walk as a Christian. The first two elements that are in that are mentioned are air and earth. The heavens being the air, and well, earth needs no explanation. It was just there. Dictionary.com defines air as a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, and a minute amount of other gases that surround Earth and forms its atmosphere. It is with this air that God breathed across the firmament as wind. Then He created the second element, Earth. Earth is defined as solid matter of this planet, dry land, ground. It is from this Earth and air that God brought forth the next elements. For we know that God separated the waters. And at the same time, fire was brought forth to the earth. Now how? How are these interconnected to us? How, how do they relate to us as humankind? First, I want to continue the connection of the elements to each other. As I've already stated, the first two days, God brought forth the fourth two, first two elements, air and earth. For it was the next two days that God separated the water out of creation. It's interesting to note that water's makeup is of two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. We all know it as H2O. What did I say earlier is the basic elements of air that we breathe, hydrogen and oxygen. So water, in essence, is nothing more than compressed air compressed to a great amount of compression. So, out of the first two elements, he brought the third. Now, fire is a little bit harder to try to explain. But I, when I later get to the actual specials, I'm really focused on fire. It was really, uh, when I did my research, it was really interesting to find the actual definition of what they consider the definition of fire. But we know that fire is birthed from any kind of carbon-based life when it is burnt. When it's been exposed to heat beyond what that substance can physically handle. In the natural friction and chemical reactions inside our earth is what brought forth fire to the land. It is that first piece of grass 
the first twig that was exposed to a lightning strike and that started to burn brought forth fire. And that was our first fire. Now we can see the basic creation of the first elements. Let's look deeper at how they are interconnected with us, humankind. You see, God created everything with a purpose and a reason. And He does it in an order that is only re revealed through His Word. For if it wasn't for the elements He created on the first two days of life that brought forth the ensuing days, there would be no possibility for life. Because the air that the fowl and other flying creatures fly in, had that not been put in place, they wouldn't be able to fly. If, let alone for us to breathe, or anything to breathe, if it wasn't for the earth that God created, there wouldn't be a place for the cattle to walk on and, and graze. Nor would there be a place for plants to take up root. Nor would there be a place for water to be held in order for us to drink out of, or animals to drink out of well water. Finally, if it wasn't for fire, there would be no heat or light or warmth or even on a greater basis the sun in which is required for all things to live. Hallelujah. It's at this point that I'm going to go straight to those elements themselves. And I'm going to point to earth. The Bible has many references to earth, from Genesis to Revelation. The most recognizable references are those to rocks and stones. We hear them all the time when we read through the Bible. Everything from the rocks and stones crying out in our place if there is no one to worship, to Jesus being the cornerstone. The earth is comprised of many varieties of rocks. The earth itself is labeled as the third rock from the sun. The dirt we walk on is nothing more than rocks and their remains. Stone forms in one of three ways. By the cooling of molten material from the Earth's interior, which we know as igneous rock, granite or obsidian. It is by the stratification of worn minerals, which we know as sedimentary rock, like sandstone or shale, or by rock that has been transformed by great pressure, which we know as metamorphic rock, marble, or diamond. 